Today, while you're watching my efforts to paint this car, I will tell you a very interesting story. From it, you will learn the story of when and how the Opel GT defeated the Porsche 911 and 914, as well as the story of their creator, the legend in the world of motorsport, Virgilio Conrero. Virgilio Conrero was a man whose life revolved around the world of cars and motorsports. He was born in Turin, Italy, on January 1, 1918, to Caterina and Francesco. His father was a pioneering figure in the mechanical industry. Virgilio's father, Francesco, instilled in him a deep love for mechanics. Their family life was peaceful until tragedy struck. In an attempt to advance their business, Francesco installed an advanced gas turbine, a cutting-edge technology of its time, with the potential to revolutionize their operations. Tragically, the turbine exploded, leading to the destruction of the company in the loss of 13 lives, including Francesco Conreros. At just 15 years old, he had to leave school to support his family during their darkest hours. This challenging period shaped Virgilio's character, making him intolerant of mediocrity in a perfectionist who demanded excellence from himself and those around him. His deep love for his country and his work became his guiding principles. Virgilio initially worked as a mechanic at a typographic construction company, but he found the work too simple for his ambitions. So, he enrolled in an evening course to become an aviation engineer. This journey was filled with sacrifices, but through sheer determination, he excelled in his studies and obtained his driver's license. This license opened the doors to Fiat aviation and the world of competitive racing. When World War II erupted, Virgilio naturally found himself serving in the field of aeronautics as a motorist. Despite the challenges and eventual defeat in the war, followed by an armistice, his path led him away from Fiat. Disheartened, he moved to Quincinetto in 1945 to join his family, who had settled there during the conflict. In Quincinetto, he secured a position as the chief engineer and head of vehicle maintenance at Ilsa Viola, a metallurgical industry in Valle d'Asta. However, fate had not forgotten Virgilio. Engineer Giovanni Savinuzzi, whom he had met during his time as an aircraft engineer, re-entered his life. Together, they founded S.V.A. Societa Valdestana Automobili, marking Virgilio's emergence as a renowned and respected figure, earning him the nickname Mago, Magician. This marked the beginning of Virgilio Conrero's journey into racing, with notable victories such as the Tour de France, where their company specialized in modifying and assisting Cisitalia cars driven by famous figures like Giovanni Bracco. Their first project involved creating an Formula 3 car with a self-constructed chassis powered by a 500 cubic centimeters Moto Guzzi engine. Subsequently, they embarked on numerous other projects, including a turbocharged Formula One car with alcohol and petrol engines boosted by turbochargers. This car showcased its incredible speed on the San Remo circuit with Swiss driver Fischer, though its journey was cut short due to issues with the pistons. The SVA adventure eventually came to an end. However, in post-war Turin, an automotive renaissance was underway, with new models emerging from manufacturers like Fiat, Lancia, Alfa Romeo, and others. Enthusiasts began seeking uniqueness beyond standard offerings, leading to the birth of specialized workshops dedicated to car modification. In this landscape, legendary names such as Nardi, Basato, and above all, Conrero, became icons. In November 1952, Autotecnica Conrero was established, marking the beginning of Virgilio Conrero's grand journey. Virgilio was not primarily a businessman, his heart beat for engines, with financial gains serving as a secondary consideration. The company faced financial challenges, as some clever racers occasionally took advantage of Virgilio's expertise and Autotechnica's resources without proper compensation. However, Virgilio remained steadfast, tightening his belt to navigate these economic hardships. 
His unwavering integrity and refusal to compromise his principles in the murky world of finance often hindered his ability to secure funding. In the heart of Old Turin, on Via Monbasilio, Virgilio Conrero began what would become his enduring legacy, transforming ordinary cars into victorious racing machines. Virgilio's fame and reputation continued to grow. Manufacturers frequently entrusted him with mass-produced engines for review and tuning before releasing their renowned models. Even celebrated personalities paid visits to Auto Technica, with individuals like Ranieri of Monaco, Nino Farina, and Juan Manuel Fangio not only discussing racing cars but also sharing tables with Virgilio, a known gourmet. As time passed, Virgilio Conrero's story transitioned into a tangible reality. His successes provided him with newfound strength, and he ventured into car manufacturing, although he never quite achieved full-fledged automaker status. Nevertheless, some of his cars were etched into memory for their ingenuity and inspiration. One such creation was the Conrero 2000. In 1953, a Swiss client commissioned this car. It featured a truss chassis, an engine derived from the Alpha 1900, a Ghia body, a Fiat 1400 front end, and an Aurelia gearbox. However, the initial endeavor met with misfortune as the car veered off course during the Thousand Miles race and was nearly destroyed. Undeterred, they recreated the car with new body in technical aspects. This time, pilot Munaren guided it to victory at the Sassy Superga and the Les Solo Alice, both celebrated races that later became part of the second Memorial Conrero in honor of the 53 victory. The Conrero journey also saw the creation of the Junior in 1958, adhering to regulations stipulating a Fiat 1100 engine with minimal modifications, generating slightly over 80 horsepower, Virgilio's imagination shone through in the frame and overall design of the car. The gearbox was ingeniously positioned between the driver's legs, and Michelotti crafted the streamlined body. The car garnered significant attention in France, where Conrero quickly gained fame, resulting in orders for 30 cars fitted with Peugeot 203 engines. However, this venture was ultimately abandoned for reasons ranging from financial constraints to a lack of nearby testing circuits. In 1958, the 1150 Sport Le Mans engine was introduced, with a displacement of 1150 cc, derived from the 1300 Alfa Romeo engine. During the 24 hours of Le Mans in 59, the car led the race with drivers De Leonibus and Cons 10, only to face the heartbreak of a semi-axle failure just moments away from the pits, resulting in withdrawal. The car's luck didn't improve at the Targa Florio in 60, where it had to retire due to unfortunate circumstances. However, the pinnacle of Virgilio Conrero's creations was undoubtedly the 2000 Sport Desmo. This remarkable car, admired even to this day, featured an Oscar branch frame completely redesigned at the rear to accommodate Formula One-style reaction struts for suspensions. The engine started with a 1900 Alfa Romeo, of which very little remained. It boasted a desmodromic distribution, a dry sump, and dual ignition. Its sleek body was once again crafted by Michelotti, making it historically significant as one of the first cars in Italy to feature disc brakes. During trials, Munaren experienced a semi-axle break, and inexplicably, the car was abandoned in a corner of a workshop. Twenty years later, Daniele Emanuele rediscovered the car in the same workshop, with its broken semi-axle. He restored it to working condition and remarkably won the Italian Car Championship in 1979. This achievement raised the question, what if it had raced and won two decades earlier? Conrero also ventured into Formula One in 61. The Tommaso had a ready chassis, and the engine needed to be a 1500cc unit. Virgilio's expertise came to the forefront as he utilized the monoblock of the Giulietta, enhanced it, and incorporated Weber carburetors to generate 152 horsepower. The car faced challenges, primarily due to its four-cylinder engine's inability to compete with the higher-performing six- and eight-cylinder engines capable of reaching higher RPMs. 
Nonetheless, with pilots such as Trentignant, Vaccarella, and Bussinello, the De Tommaso Conrero achieved remarkable results within two years. Virgilio Conrero's unwavering love for engines remained at the heart of his endeavors. Numerous automakers, including Fiat, Renault, Opel, Lancia, and most notably, Alfa Romeo, sought the services of the Virgilio workshop. As early as 1956, his commitment to Alfa Romeo began yielding dividends, especially in France, where numerous customers and victories established him as a prominent figure in the 1300cc class worldwide. Pilots such as Carlo Abate, the Rodriguez brothers Pedro and Ricardo, and Consalvo Sinisi made their mark in North and South America, achieving victories in races like the Twelve Hours of Sebring, Le Mans, the Tour de France, and Reims. In 63, Virgilio Conrero assumed the role of the official trainer for Alfa Romeo, cementing his relationship with the parent company and gaining access to original parts. Autotecnica relocated to Via Madama Cristina and was consistently filled with various Alfa Romeo models, including the 1900 Super, 1300 Ti, 1300 Sprint, TZ, and Giulietta. Under Virgilio's care, these cars achieved power outputs exceeding 100 horsepower per liter. One standout creation was the Drop, a modification of the Giulietta designed by Michelotti. It was tailored for the Parolio driver and swiftly secured victories at the Aosta Pilar race, alongside setting a speed record at Monza. This period marked the emergence of Virgilio Conrero not only as a skilled preparer but also as a paragon of integrity, as his cars rarely faced technical infractions during inspections. For him, it was a matter of honor. The late 1950s and early 60s witnessed a cascade of victories, with two road and mountain titles secured by Abbott in 57, the Cons 10 brothers clinching triumphs at the Liege Roma Liege, the Coppa del Alpi, and an astonishing 12 out of 14 race victories in 58. The victories continued into 59 with the 12 hours of Sebring and 60, amassing an impressive total of 78 wins. Notable drivers such as Johan Rint and Lorenzo Bandini also graced the wheel of Conrero modified cars. In 1968, a pivotal moment arrived as Virgilio's path diverged. Chidi, the headstrong leader at Auto Delta, Alfa Romeo's racing division. Their relationship soured pushing Virgilio towards other ventures. While some became alpha preparers using ideas influenced by Virgilio, his journey faced yet another period of complexity. Virgilio had made substantial investments in advanced technical equipment, but thankfully, Count Zanin stepped in, offering support to sustain the Conrero legacy. The era of the G.T.A. Gran Turismo Allegorita was ushered in, resulting in power enhancements from the original 130 horsepower to 160, 180, and 185 horsepower. The victories flowed abundantly, including a historic moment at Monza in 1970 when Auto Delta's squadron, led by the much disliked Chidi, was outperformed by two smaller GTA Conrero cars. Luigi Calzani claimed victory with a lap advantage, a moment of triumph that Virgilio celebrated with a speech, humorously attributing his success to the slowness of the competition. 1970 proved to be magical, with Artilio becoming the Swiss champion in a Renault Alpine A110, Calzani securing the Italian championship in the GTA 1300 Group 2, Luigi Cabella becoming the Italian champion in the GTA 1600, and Ramoino achieving the Italian championship in the 1300 Group 3 with an Alpine A110. Virgilio Conrero's fame extended internationally, drawing the attention of none other than the Japanese. His association and friendship with Soichiro Honda, the renowned founder of Honda Motor symbolized the immense respect Virgilio had garnered over the years. Numerous Japanese engines, initially considered somewhat underwhelming, found their way to Turin's workshops, emerging rejuvenated and enhanced. Virgilio's trips to Japan, an unusual experience for him accustomed to more modest surroundings, were met with grand receptions, befitting a man of his stature, an accolade he should have received in Italy as well. 
Surprisingly, some prominent figures in the Italian automotive industry, geographically close to Conrero, remained indifferent to his accomplishments, with certain distinctions of the fiat house being at odds with Virgilio's rugged hands-on approach to serious work. Renault also entrusted Virgilio with the preparation and development of the Gordini 1300 engine for rallying, taking it from 90 horsepower to nearly 130 horsepower. This endeavor marked the beginning of Virgilio's foray into the world of rally racing, where he made acquaintances with notable drivers such as Cavallari, Paganelli, Balistrieri, and Odetto. Autotechnica's diverse experiences knew no bounds. They extended their expertise to the preparation of motorboat and smaller boat engines, collaborating with individuals like Roger Budot and the English Triumph. Virgilio's affection for Opel ignited in 1969 when Ardioli initially approached with the opportunity. At the beginning Conrero hesitated. His reluctance stemmed from a lack of trust in the Opel's engine, which was entirely cast in iron, and concerns about the substantial work required to improve the car's brakes and suspension. However, Ardioli was not one to accept a refusal easily. He persisted with the project and went to great lengths to assess the Opel GT's potential. His journey took him to Rome, where he took possession of the very first Opel GT in Italy. He embarked on a road trip back to Bolzano, tracing some of the same routes used in the famous Mil Miglia race. During this drive, Ardioli discovered that the Opel GT was a genuinely enjoyable car to drive. He became convinced that it had the necessary attributes to challenge Porsche in Group 4's competitive 2-liter class. The Opel GT was a product of Opel's in-house design studio, led by Erhard Schnell. The concept behind the car was to create a more affordable European counterpart to the Corvette, and this idea had originated from Claire Mack Kitchen, who had been the chief designer at Chevrolet during the 1950s and 60s. Mechanically, the Opel GT borrowed from the Cadet, including an optional 1.9-liter, four-cylinder engine that produced a modest 90 horsepower. However, what set the Opel GT apart was its striking design, complete with distinctive pop-up headlights that made it an instant eye-catcher. Ardioli was deeply impressed when he first got behind the wheel of the Opel GT. It was lightweight, well-balanced, and featured a front-medium engine layout that made it easy to handle. Ardioli saw its potential to outperform its main competitor, the Porsche 914, in its class. Conrero's interest in the Opel GT didn't fully materialize until Opel started homologating race parts for the new Group 4 category. By then, the Opel GT had already seen some racing action, with Henri Gretter using one in rally racing, and privateer Alberto Dona achieving a close second place in class during the 1969 Bolt Sano Mendola Hilklem, despite issues with the stock brakes and suspension. In 1970, Conrero began working on two Opel GTs received from Ardioli, one gold and one red, both designated for Group 4 competition. The initial modifications were modest, with a 70 horsepower increase and wide wheel arches added for improved stability. De Pauli drove the Gold GT to a fourth place finish in its class despite its issues with brakes and suspension. The real breakthrough came in the 1970 Grand Premio Mugello, a challenging road race. Benedini, driving a much improved red GT, managed to finish first in class, beating 12 Porsches including both 911 and 914 models. This victory garnered significant attention and established the Opel GT as a serious competitor to Porsche in the eyes of the Italian press. With this newfound publicity, Ardioli secured the support needed to further develop the Opel GT, and Conrero had the resources to make substantial improvements. For the 1971 season, Conrero presented a significantly enhanced version of the GT, with the engine producing up to 190 horsepower. Ardioli and Conrero had three GTs ready for the 1971 Targa Florio, and their teamwork during practice sessions helped them achieve their best possible lap times. However, the race was not without challenges. A spinning launcher forced one of the Opel GTs to crash, 
leading to impromptu repairs and a white replacement nose for the damaged car. Despite these setbacks, Opel driver Salvatore Calasabetta managed to secure a narrow victory in the sub-2 liter class, defeating the Porsches and solidifying the Opel GT's reputation as a Porsche beater. Conrero was already looking ahead, discussing the possibility of equipping the Opel GT with a 5-speed gearbox for future races. In 1972, the Opel GTs returned with a distinctive yellow and blue livery. They were now equipped with a ZF 5-speed manual gearbox and featured engine upgrades, pushing the output to 205 or 214 horsepower, depending on the carburation. Giorgio Pianta showcased the benefits of the Kugelfischer injection system by posting impressive lap times, but unfortunate mechanical issues prevented the Opel GTs from starting the race. Despite the setbacks, the Opel GT effort persisted. Alberto Rosselli delivered an outstanding performance, securing a ninth-place overall finish and first in class during the Targa Florio. By 1973, the Targa Florio marked its final running, and Conrero's focus shifted towards the Momo Conrero, a Group 5 prototype powered by a 2-liter Opel engine. Two Opel GTs were entered alongside it, with Bonacorsi and Panto finishing third in their category, trailing a 911S and a 914 Porsches. In 1973, Opel decided to discontinue its involvement in track racing. At this point, Virgilio Conrero had already accumulated significant experience in the motorsport field, thanks in large part to the French. The French connection was crucial because numerous Alpine vehicles were developed in Turin, Italy. Undeterred by Opel's decision, Conrero and his Autotechnica team dove headfirst into a new phase of racing. They continued to evolve the Opel Ascona A, boosting its power to 175 horsepower in the Group 1 version. During this period, the workshop's head, Mario Mariolino Cavaniero, became a legendary figure in the rally scene. Notably, he would later assume the role of technical director for Peugeot Cars, a testament to the professional development that Conrero's team offered. In the years 1973, 1974, and 1975, Conrero's racing results remained impressive, mirroring the successes of previous seasons on the track. They secured victories not only in various classes but also in overall competitions throughout Italy and Europe. A formidable roster of drivers contributed to these achievements, including Salvatore Bray, Fagnola, Mondino, Pressato, Lucky Battistali, Serrato, Ormazano, Biasayan, Tony Ficina, Balistrieri, Verini, and numerous other, lesser-known, drivers. What drew these individuals to Conrero wasn't just his coaching prowess but also his role as a mentor, a second father, as many official pilots fondly described him. He was always there to provide guidance and support, even when funds were scarce, as long as the passion for racing burned bright. During this period, Conrero's workshop gave birth to iconic cars like the Cadet GTE 1900 and 2000, the Ascona 400, the Manta 400, and eventually the Cadet GSI. It was not uncommon for Opel Conrero to finish second to Fiat in the Italian championship. However, in 1981, the tide turned, and Tony Ficina finally clinched the Italian Rally Championship, defeating even the mighty Fiat. Tragically, in 1984, Virgilio Conrero fell seriously ill. The years of relentless hard work and sacrifices began taking a toll on his health, but he soldiered on. In his final years of active involvement, he worked on Peugeot, Talbot, the Samba, and the 205 GDI. Later, he became a consultant to Lancia, the iconic Italian carmaker. Lancia trusted the white pen, as he was sometimes called, for his invaluable advice. It was during this time that legendary Lancia cars like the S4, the 037, and the mythical Delta were born. In 1985, Virgilio Conrero made the decision to withdraw from active participation and chose retirement at his Moncalieri residence. Virgilio's entire career is marked by an impressive tally of over 3,000 victories. 
exceptional individuals like him are a rarity, and their contributions are beyond measure. Regrettably, on the morning of January 6, 1990, Virgilio Conrero departed from this world. With him, an entire era transcended into the realm of eternity. Nevertheless, his extraordinary creations and the triumphs of the past century continue to reside in our hearts, serving as a lasting testament to a remarkable individual who left an enduring legacy in the world of motorsport.